Um, uh, once again, a uh, very big hi to one and all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for checking into this video. And in this video presentation, I would like to briefly share with you the meaning of the following terminology often used in ecology and environmental science paper, particularly under the topic of biodiversity and conservation. These had also been the frequently asked in quite a few number of competitive exams, including uh, UGC net exams. And for better and easy understanding, examples will be used to explain the difference between these species types. And to begin with, let's first see what is a keystone species. And to understand the, to understand what is a keystone species, let's take an example of a grassland ecosystem. In a grassland ecosystem, the autotrophs or the primary con uh, primary con uh, producer, they occupy the base of the trophic level, and which is then followed by the uh, by the primary consumer or the herbivore, which are the deer, and which are also then followed in the by secondary consumer or the carnivores, which are the grazers. Okay, so now all these three uh, organisms are interdependent to one another for their existence and survival. Now imagine one of the species, one of the species is being eliminated or removed due to certain environmental factors or human induced factors. For example, let's say grave wolf population in the grassland, uh, uh, in the grassland ecosystem has declined or has become extinct. Now the whole ecosystem will be in a problem. First, since there is no predator, then the, the, then, there will, uh, then the deer population will explode, okay? And as a result, there, uh, this will put a tremendous pressure on the autotrophs or the primary producer. And time will come that they, uh, that will come that a vegetation community can no longer be able to regenerate themselves. And uh, this will subsequently lead to the lack of food in the ecosystem and as a result will lead to the extinction of the other species which are found in the ecosystem so therefore <coughs> so therefore uh, a keystone species is a species which played an important role in maintaining the structure and function of an habitat or an ecosystem without which without which the ecosystem will collapse. Okay, so now, now I hope you understand what is a keystone species. To make it simpler, let me take another example. If you take an, a pond, an example of a pond ecosystem, you'll have the primary producer, which are the phytoplanktons, the primary consumers, which are the zooplanktons, and the secondary, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now what happened now, even in the pond ecosystem, let's say something happened. And then what happened? The entire phytoplankton is being removed or being removed from that pond, or being uh, the, the population decreased drastically or due to some unknown reason. So what will happen to the trophic? What will happen to the food chain? Now, if there is no phytoplankton, obviously there will be no zooplankton. If there's no zooplankton, there will be no fish, isn't it? So as a result, the entire ecosystem will collapse. So therefore, these species which plays a significant role in maintaining the structure and function of an ecosystem, such species are known as the keystone species. Okay. Now let's see what is a flagship species. See, there are some other many or there are many uh, species, especially those animal species which are in the wild. They are under constant threat of extinction. Okay. So in order to create awareness about importance and for protecting and conserving these species in any particular protected area or over a large geographical area or even around the world, what happened? Some species are used or are represented as an amb ambassador or as an icon or as a symbol for different organizations, for different events or for different environmental campaigns. Okay. So by using these species as an ambassador, as an icon, as a symbol, what happened now? These species gets the attention of the people of the world or the leaders of the world. And as a result, the species are protected and conserved. Okay. So a few examples for this is, like for example, is which are uh, animal species who act as a flagship species are 
For example, the giant panda, which is which is used as an icon for a WWF icon, and it when uh, in 2016 South Asian game a mascot of one one horn rhino was being used. Okay, and for example, protection of December, we have a Bengal tiger. Okay, which is used as a flagship species. Every in even. In 2014, the Amadillo uh, mascot is used, isn't it? So what happened now? These species are used as a flagship species. So basically, to get so because they need to be protected because even the, because their popul their population in the wild is decreasing drastically. That's why they need to be protected and conserved. Okay. So therefore, um, so therefore uh, the the um, the uh, flagship species are also known sometimes also known as the charismatic species. Okay. Now let's see to the next part, which is the foundation species. Now what are foundation species? To understand what is a foundation species, if, if you have come, I think if you have come, uh, if you have studied in ecology, you have come across the term succession. Okay, and you will have come across uh, this, the different stage of succession. And there is something which is known as the pioneer species or the climate species. So foundation species are somewhat like that of the pioneer species, okay? So what are these foundation species? Foundation species are those species which plays an important role in constructing or designing or redesigning any particular ecosystem or habitat, thus making that habitat more habitable for other organisms to live. So such species are called as a foundation species. To make this a little bit easy, let's take an example. For example, corals. Of coral reefs. So now, how what happened? Now these corals, okay, they are they are the invertebrate animals. What do they do? They do is they use or they extract the calcium carbonate which is there in this seawater. Okay. So when they extract this, they they develop a form a hard structure on the seabed, like for something like something like this. Then this hard structure now actually act as a framework or as a foundation for other life form to form in which the coral reef is formed. Okay. So therefore, corals are actually the foundation species in the coral reefs. Another example of foundation of uh, foundation uh, species are the kelp forest. These are not inland uh, forests; they are actually underwater forests. Okay, they are formed actually by the extensive growth of algae along the coastal area. Okay, as these algae grow and multiply, what happens? They act as a shelter for for shelter for shelters. And also provide food for different types of uh, uh, aquatic organisms, which are which are aquatic organisms found in a marine ecosystem. Okay, so therefore these species are therefore known as the foundation species because they act as an engineer of an ecosystem. Okay. Now last, uh, let's talk to what is an invasive species. And invasive species are those species which are not indigenous to any particular region or an area. Actually, they are actually they have been just transported or been transferred uh, into a new habitat either accidentally or maybe uh, intentionally or accidentally. However, when these species reach into this area, into this particular new habitat, they start growing and multiplying profusely. And what do they do? They start overtaking the native species which are present uh, native species and what do they do they start altering this species composition of an area and as a result they start removing or destroying the native species of plant and animal found in that particular area okay so for example the best example for invasive species is lantana camera and parthenium hysteroforus okay for example with lantana camera is the situation happens like in the nilgiri hills in nilgiri what happened now Elephant, the aesthetic elephant, the aesthetic elephant have a hard uh, static shortage supply of food because of the invasion uh, because the invasion of this lantana camera over the the, the, the the native shrubs which are uh, in which these uh, 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 elephants feed on. Okay, so this has been creating a lot of problem. So therefore, these species uh, invasive species are also sometimes known as the exotic species or the alien species. Okay. So these are the reference for the discussion today, and then in the next uh, video I'll be continuing with this. With uh, we continuing on the different type of species, uh, which will be this. I'll be discussing on the umbrella species, indicator species, and the mixed species and the sentinel species. And with this, I'd like to say thank you, thank you so much, and I hope and I believe you learned something and you from this video. 
and you'll gain some information about what are different type of species here. And with this, I'd like to say thank you and God bless.